Hi everyone, James here from School of Synthesis again. Uh, today we're just going to do a small video on um, some cool little tips and tricks you can use with uh, Logic's Flex Pitch. Uh, we've got a small track here. I've got a vocal sample that I found on Splice. And what I want to do is just create a section to the right, a little B section. Um, and using Logic's Flex Pitch, what I can do is work with the vocal sample I've got here to change the melodic line to be a bit more in line with what we do with the rest of the track. Uh, so before we go any further, let's just take a listen to what we've got here first. Okay, great. So what we want to do now is actually create a section to the right here um, and make a sort of B section for our track, maybe edit the notes of our bass line and ch maybe change the rhythm of our percussion as well. Um, so before we do that, let's just go up to our cycle locators here and I'll bring it in. This is the section that I want to copy. So I'll just show you a few cool little tricks. If we right click on our cycle locators, we can actually go copy section between locators. Once we've done that, if we then drag our playhead across to where we want to put it, we can then right click on that and go insert section at playhead. What that will do is copy anything in here, regions and automation, and then just paste it across here and bump everything next to that along leaving that as is. Uh, we can also look at a few other things. Let's say I just wanted to add a section in here without copying this stuff. I just wanted to add say an extra eight bar section that I could write something new. I could drag out my cycle locators eight bars. Once we've done that, I can then right click and I can go insert silence between locators. Again, it'll bump everything across and give us a new fresh slate of eight bars that we can then work on. Uh, what we can also do if we um, bring our cycle locators back here, we can also right click and we can repeat the section between the locators. We can also cut the section between the locators. Uh, so if we can man Z back to where we were, uh, again, what I want to do is copy this and then I want to paste it here for our B section. So with that done, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to mute the vocals and then I'm just going to work on changing our bass pad. And then let's um, unsolo that and listen to the track without the vocal of what we have now. So a very simple change there and already we've changed the uh, vibe of the track there. So now let's focus back on our vocal. I'll solo that. Now we could leave it as is and it would still sound fine and work well with the context of the track, but I actually want to change the melodic notes so the vocal sort of sounds like it sits on the root note as well. Uh, when we're working with samples, we can actually use Logic's Flex Pitch to allow us to do this. So to get to Flex Pitch, the first thing you want to do is make sure the enable, the show hide flex button is enabled, which is up here. And once we turn that on, we'll be able to see all the flex options we have for our audio tracks here. So first thing we want to do for each track that we want to make edits, we want to enable flex. So this is our vocal track. We want to enable the flex and the view changes to look something like this. Now, what we're looking at here is actually the flex time view. With Logic, we have two uh, separate features. We have flex time and flex pitch. Uh, the difference between them, flex pitch is when we want to alter the pitch of our audio files. So we want to take individual notes and we want to pitch them up or down. And whereas flex time, flex time is what we go to when we want to change the timing of our hits or the timing of our notes. So to swap over to flex pitch, what we want to do is go to our drop down here, which houses all of our algorithms. And instead of selecting one of the flex time ones, we want to select flex pitch. And once we do that, you'll see our audio file starts to look a bit like a piano roll with individual MIDI notes. 
Now we can work in this view here in the workspace, but I tend to prefer to work in our audio editors for this. So to do that, we can highlight our region in particular, and we can either press E on our keyboard or we can select the editor button up here. So when we do that, it will bring up the audio editor for that region. Now, when you open yours, if it doesn't look like this, it's either opened up on the file section and you just need to click across the track or it's on the track, but the actual, the extra flex button in here is not turned on. So you want to make sure that is enabled also, and that will give you this flex view. Now, once we're here, it looks quite similar to a piano roll. We have our keyboard on the left-hand side and we have our sharps and flats. And visually we have um, what you would think are MIDI notes, but they're the pictures of our audio file um, drawn out here. Now, when we work with flex pitch, what we have is we have six different options here and the little dots are where we can control them. So the first one I want to show you is the fine pitch, which was the middle one at the top. Now, if some of the notes are slightly sharp or slightly flat, what we can do is we can come in here and adjust with the fine pitch to get them on pitch. So as you see, as I click on that and drag up or down, I can change the fine pitch here of that note. So I can set that to zero there and I know that that is now um, pitched correctly. We zoom out a bit here. There's actually a quick little thing you can do with your audio files here if you want to ensure everything's in perfect pitch. Now, first of all, you can click and press Command A to highlight everything here and you can right click and you go set all to perfect pitch. And you'll see it'll go through and anything that is sharp or flat, it will then force it into perfect pitch. Uh, if I'll Command Z to undo that, you can also, with everything highlighted, go over to pitch correction on the left here and adjust anywhere between zero and 100%. Uh, next up, what we have, if we zoom back in again to our three dots, uh, let's just talk about the vibrato. Uh, so you see the white note in the middle here. What that represents actually is um, the pitch travel within each note. So as you can see here, there's a big pitch drop here. And so that's talking about our vibrato. Uh, and this middle dot here, if I command A to highlight everything, if I drag up or down on that, you can see I can flatten out all of that pitch um, movement within each note. This sort of flattens out the pitch sound and gives you that robotic kind of pitch corrected sound. Uh, you can also go and exaggerate that. So if I really crank it up and exaggerate it and press play, you'll hear all that pitch wavering around. So it can be quite comedic as well. Uh, so I'm going to pull that back down to, say, 100% where it was originally. I'm not going to bother about flatting, flattening that out. And then next up, let's just have a look at um, the pitch drift here. So now that we know that this represents the direction of travel of the pitch, um, what pitch drift does is if you see how this little uptick here, this is telling us the pitch is sort of sliding down from up here into this note. We can adjust how extreme that is or not. So sometimes when we move notes around, we might want to fine tune the vibrato and the pitch drift just to help them sort of line up a little bit easier traveling from note to note. Um, this pitch drift also works for the start of the note as well as the end of a note too. We also have form and shift. We'll talk about that in a moment. We might create a harmony with this uh, vocal sample and when we create that harmony, we'll take a look at form and shift a bit more. Uh, and then we have gain. So if we want to adjust the level um, of individual notes being sung in here, I could come in here while I'm editing it and adjust the gain levels. And you can see that's reflected in the background as I do that as well. Now, what I'm going to do with this vocal after going through that, um, very simple, just like the bass line, what I'm going to do is go through and grab these individual notes. And if I grab it in the middle, I can actually drag up by um, semitones rather than fine pitch. So if I grab that and just drag them up to the root note there. I'm going to go through and do it with a few. And any that like this that are clearly quite severely flat, flat or sharp, what I'll do is adjust the fine pitch for those ones. So now that I've done that, let's just take a listen. Um, to this vocal with the track, just changing those few notes. And let's see what vibe that gives us now. Okay, so you see with just a few quick little changes there to the notes, we have 
um, quite a different vibe and quite a different um, section there. So next up, another cool thing that we can use Flex Pitch for is we can actually use it to um, harmonize when we're working with vocal samples. Uh, so if I just click on our track here and press Command D, this will duplicate our channel with the same processes, processing that I've got on it. And then I'll option drag this down here and we can work on uh, setting up a harmony there. So I'm just going to solo this one now. We're going to work on this one. And again, I'm not going to do anything too crazy. All I'm going to do here is just harmonize a perfect fifth. So to do that, we either go up seven semitones or we go down five semitones. And now we've harmonized down uh, a perfect fifth. So let's have a listen to that. Now, in isolation, it's going to sound a little bit weird, but we'll have a look at that in a second. So it doesn't sound the greatest. You can hear there are some artifacts in there. Uh, so when using flex pitch to create kind of these harmonies, especially if you um, alter the notes a little bit too far from their original, you're going to get some weird sounding artifacts. Now, one of the things I tend to say when creating these kind of harmonies is you want to be able to soak them in reverb delay, sit them back in the mix, um, have them accompany the main vocal, um, and that way you can hide those artifacts. And in the context of a whole mix, it's actually not going to sound bad at all. It'll sound quite good. We can also work with form and shift to bring back some of that natural characteristic. So with formants, if we sing higher in pitch naturally, we don't go chip monkey. But if we were to record our vocals and then pitch it up, it starts to get that chip monkey sound or vice versa when we go down. Now that comes from the fact that when um, in reality, when we sing up or down, there's certain characteristics of our voice that don't change too much. And so when we're pitching our vocals like this is, as a sample, um, we can use form and shift to try and retain some of those um, vocal characteristics and help give it a bit more of a natural sound, basically. Uh, so with this, um, what I'll do is I'll play this uh, harmony in the context of the track, because again, um, it's a bit hard to do this in isolation. They're always going to sound a little bit weird, but if you mix it in the context of the track, it makes it a bit easier to get it sitting right. Uh, so as I play, what I'll do is, um, actually before that, let's just show you what the formant shift does. So while we're soloed, let's have a look. I've got everything highlighted, so I'll zoom in here, grab one of the formant shifts, and I'll play it, and as I adjust the formant shift, you'll hear what it does. So if we go higher, it'll make it even more artificial. So as we start getting that chip monkey sound, if I bring it back down, and go the other way. We start getting something a bit deeper. And somewhere in there, it sounds a little bit more natural, and it will in the context of the mix. So if we do that now in the context of the mix, I'll just adjust it to where I feel it sounds good. Uh, so finally, the last thing that I want to show you while we're here, just to um, give you a quick view of the difference between flex time and flex pitch. If we go down to this hat loop, just for a little bit of extra variation, what I'll do is I'll use flex time and just move a few of these hits to create a slightly different groove. Um, so if I solo that and zoom in on our hat loop here, again, we want to enable flex for this track. And I'm not going to go into what each of these algorithms are in this video. We have other videos that do touch on what these algorithms are. But just so you know, when it's set to automatic, um, Logic will analyze the audio file and try and figure out which algorithm is best suited for your piece of audio material. Now, it doesn't always get it right, um, so just keep that in mind. Um, but in this situation, it actually has got it right. We do want to work with slicing. Um, so slicing is when we're working with uh, non-tonal percussive material. Uh, it tends to be things like um, drums and percussion loops and stuff like that. Uh, drums do have some tone in the kick drum and the toms and whatnot, but generally um, we're looking, we, we classify it as non-tonal percussive material.
Uh, so what slicing does is allows us to move individual hits without um, adding any time expansion or time compression. So it's not going to stretch the pieces of audio out. It's going to maintain um, the hit and shift it to where we want it to go. Uh, so let's dive in here. You'll see these white dots in the background. They're what we call transient markers. So when Logic analyzed the audio file, it's gone through and added all these transient markers. Now, a transient is an initial peak in sound or an initial peak in amplitude of a sound or waveform, and it generally signifies the beginning or the attack of a hit or note. Um, so it's a good place to figure out where each hit starts. So after analyzing the audio file, Logic then puts all these transient markers. And if we were to quantize this, for instance, if I open my region inspector and I set my quantize to 16th notes, um, Logic will look at these individual transient markers and anything that's not quite on a near 16th, it will bump onto the nearest 16th. So if we do that, you'll see some of these notes that were slightly off the nearest 16th, it's now gone through, picked those transient markers and bumped them and knocked everything back into perfect time with our grid. Uh, I'm not going to quantize here. I'm not worried about that, so I'll turn that off. So what we can do is we can actually um, change these notes individually by ourselves by using flex markers. Uh, so to add a flex marker, if I hover over here, you see I get a pin sign with a plus. If I press that, you'll see I add what's called a flex marker. And I can then click and drag this left or right. Now, if I do that, one thing you might notice straight off the bat is that it slows everything down beforehand and speeds everything up afterwards. And if I go the other way, it's vice versa. It speeds everything up here and slows everything down here. So if I was to turn the metronome on and we were to listen to that, you'll hear everything is out of time. So in this situation, that's not going to work for us. So if I command Z here to bring back to where we were originally, instead of adding one pin, what we can actually do is hover a little bit further down and we get the option to add three pins. So if I click that, you'll see it adds a pin to the nearest left transient marker and a pin to the nearest right transient marker and then one where we want it to go. And what that does is creates these anchors here that allows us to then move this one in the middle without affecting the rest of our audio file. And so these flex markers, they use our smart snap feature up here. So you'll see as I drag this, I can then snap this to the grid to where I want it to go. I'll just quickly go through and do that with a couple of others just here. Again, nothing too crazy, just a very simple uh, change here. And we can have a listen to the changing groove that we have there. Nothing too crazy. Again, something small, simple, just to help create some variation here. Now with that done, if I unsolo everything, um, we can listen now to what the track sounds like in this B section with a harmony, with our notes adjusted in the bass and in the vocal melodic line as well, um, to hover more around the root note and a slight change in our percussion pattern here. So let's have a listen to that. Okay, great. Let's uh, now listen to that in the context of the whole track here. Okay, great. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for more.